Good morning, everyone. I'm Michelle Flint, president of the Damon College Faculty Senate, and I welcome you to the, to the 2015 convocation. Please rise for the Star Spangled Banner and remain standing as George Miller begins singing the national anthem. Please join in. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight all oh, the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangle banner yet wave oh the land of the free and the home of the beautifully done, Mr. Miller. Thank you so much. It is my pleasure now to introduce Dean of the Division of Arts and Sciences, Dr. Shirley Peterson. Good morning, uh, esteemed colleagues and trustees, students, parents, staff, and friends of Damon College. As we begin a new academic year, I'd like to welcome back our returning students and an especial, a special welcome to our new students and new colleagues at Damon. I wish everyone an enjoyable and uh, productive year. It's my honor today to introduce Dr. Gary Olson, the sixth president of Damon College, who is in his third academic year at Damon. During that period, we have seen the college move in many positive directions, thanks to Dr. Olson's vision and his ability to uh, raise the profile of Damon College as one of the premier institutions of Western New York. If it weren't for all the construction going on out on Main Street, you'd see visible signs of that in all the new trees and the stone wall that, that borders the campus now. Dr. Olson has more than 30 years in academics and is a well-known scholar of rhetoric, writing, and culture as well as an experienced administrator in higher education, serving in several institutions before arriving at Damon in 2013. He's also a prolific and well-respected author, editor and co-author with his wife, Dr. Lynn Warsham, of more than 20 books and 100 essays. 
He's a contributor to the Chronicle of Higher Education and um, writing on educational issues and to the Huffington Post commenting on important issues for students like um, making college affordable for all students. He's been acknowledged by Buffalo First as one of the most influential Western New Yorkers and has helped uh, da with win Damon College notice in the Chronicle as one of the best colleges to work for. We also trust that students will find it one of the best places to attend college. These are all well-known facts uh, about Dr. Olson, but I'd like to leave you with maybe something you didn't know about him. Um, He's always very formally attired, as is becoming of a college president. But there's been rumors that he's been suiting up lately as the Damon Wildcat mascot. So you might want to watch for that. Um, I think uh, he still has a few surprises for us in the future. So please join with me in welcoming the president of Damon College, Dr. Gary Olson. Thank you, Dean Peterson. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome each and every one of you back to campus and extend a special welcome to members of the 2015 first year class. You know, it's wonderful to see all the new faces. And I'd like to begin by uh, recognizing the members of the Damon College Board of Trustees who are with us today. Now, as you know, the Board of Trustees is the governing body of the college. Now, please hold your applause until our trustees are standing. I'm going to ask them to stand. First is Chair of the Board of Trustees, Dale Demyanek, partner at Lumsden and McCormick. Next is Audrey Bunis, philanthropist and retired executive. And Dr. Brenda Young, faculty representative on the board. So please help me recognize with a wildcat <laughs> round of applause. Now at Damon, we have a round of applause and a wildcat round of applause. We need the wildcat round of applause. So let's do it again. There you go. Good job. You know, convocation represents a chance for all members of the Damon community to assemble for the first time at the start of the new academic year. And it provides all of us in the college with the opportunity to extend a sincere welcome to each of our students, as well as our returning students. Uh, but it's also more than that. Through convocation, members of the Damon community reaffirm our commitment to academic excellence, and we celebrate our common purpose, which is to provide each and every student with a first-rate education. Now, over the years, Damon College has steadfastly maintained a tradition of excellence in teaching and learning. And this is one of the core principles upon which this great institution was founded. Now our focus now is to build upon that cherished tradition. Now the most important ability you as a student uh, will acquire in your college years is the ability to think critically and analytically about the world. As college educated individuals, you'll have the ability and the responsibility to always exercise your critical thinking skills. Today, you begin a journey to refine those intellectual skills and to ask countless questions about yourself and the world around you. You know, college is all about possibilities and opportunities. And you'll find that it is a time to sample, to try on for size, the new, the different, and the changing. Uh, it's a time to stretch yourself intellectually and emotionally, to test your limits. You'll work harder than you've ever worked. Consider strange ideas, hopefully with an open mind, and engage with people who have come from different states, different nations, and hold very different philosophical views, or worship different religions, or maybe even no religion at all. Now, I encourage each of you to explore a wide variety of ideas, interests, friends, and activities, while also assessing what makes sense for you and what doesn't. I encourage you to keep asking questions and looking for answers. You'll find your years here to be filled with many opportunities, possibilities, and ideas to explore. And by the time you become college graduates, if you've done your job and we've done ours, you will have acquired a habit of mind to think critically and analytically about the world all the time. This is an ability that will help you make wise choices for the rest of your life. 
and it all starts today. So we sincerely hope that you'll also take advantage of the many opportunities and programs that will enable you to learn both in and out of the classroom. Some of these include volunteering, signing up for internships, engaging in service learning, just to name a few. So in short, the next years will be among the most exciting of your life. And you'll find them to be intellectually stimulating and, at the same time, we hope, fun. So good luck. I look forward to meeting you personally over the years. And have a great year. And go Wildcats. Thank you, Dr. Olson. It is now my great pleasure to introduce the Chairman of the Board of Trustees of Damon College and a graduate of Damon College, Class of 1979, Del Demyonic. Good morning. On behalf of the Damon College Board of Trustees, I'd like to welcome everyone here this morning. I would like to extend a special welcome to those of you who are from out of town and out of state since you have traveled, in some instances, quite a distance to become a part of Damon College and our campus community. Convocation is always a special day on any college or university campus. One definition of convocation is an assembly of persons. Well, that's true, of course, but for Damon College and many other colleges and universities, the fall convocation is much more than a simple assembly. For members of the first year class, it is the official start of your college years. It is also, together with commencement, one of two opportunities each year that members of the college administration, faculty, and members of the board have to speak to members of the student body at two very different moments in their college careers. On behalf of the Damon College Board of Trustees and as an alumnus of the college, I sincerely hope that your experience as a Damon College student will be as satisfying and rewarding as my own. As a graduate of this institution, I can say that I very much look back on my years here as wonderful ones. I hope you will do the same. You will find the Damon community to be a welcoming one, as well as a very rewarding place to become involved in your favorite subjects, both inside and outside of the classroom. Congratulations on becoming a part of Damon College. We are very glad that you are here and have an excellent year. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I am very pleased to introduce our next speaker, Damon College Class of 1986 graduate Dr. Adair White Johnson. Dr. White Johnson is a best-selling author and leading authority on motivating and inspiring others to make positive changes in their lives to overcome life's challenges. Dr. White Johnson has authored several books that offer inspirational messages, strategies, and techniques that empower individuals to become change agents in their own lives. Among her books are How to Get Over It in 30 Days, and Go Hard and Stumble Softly, Secrets of Living a Fulfilled and Enriched Life Despite and in Spite of Yourself. After retiring from a success, successful career as a professional school counselor, Dr. White Johnson created the Empowerment House, where she coaches teens and women to become more resilient through life's changes. She has developed an empowerment and resiliency curriculum for teens, which won the Writer's Award for Excellence, the highest honor for writing from the Georgia School Counselor Association. Currently a member of the University of Buffalo Alumni Association Board of Directors, she previously served on the executive board of the Cobb School and was the 2012 face of lupus for the Lupus Foundation of America, Georgia chapter. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Adair White Johnson. Good morning, everybody. I am a bit nervous. It's been 30 years since I was a senior student here at Damon, and never in my lifetime at that time I would have thought I would be standing before you today. So I do have nerves here, so hopefully I can get through it. But let me begin by thanking President Olson and to everyone who's present on the stage. I want to thank Dr. Brogan for bringing me here to speak today. 
to the Damon faculty and staff, especially to Dr. Ellen Banks. Um, I'd like to extend a special thank you to a few of my sorority sisters who are here today who actually have served as surrogate parents for me over the years. I've known them since I was 17. And um, greetings to the students, that's all of you guys, and the staff. And extra special thanks to Katie Graff, who has treated me like a queen since yesterday. Thank you. <laughs> I am so excited, honored, and humbled to be in the presence of all of you at this magnificent convocation. It certainly gives me the opportunity to share significant thoughts that can inspire and prepare you for your studies as you begin your studies at Damon. I remember when I first arrived at Damon, I had high hopes in my spirit, I had success in my mind, and my heart was just so full with my dreams. I, I knew that Damon was the beginning of my road to my success, but I just had to figure out how to be successful here. I had to figure out that how. So I did. And today I'm going to share with you a few of the things that helped me to complete my degree here at Damon in three and a half years, despite being a lackluster high school student and despite arriving on this campus from an entirely different world from my hometown of Brooklyn. What if? What if we allowed ourselves to dream about the seemingly impossible? What if we gave ourselves permission to believe in those dreams? And what if we allowed our faith to be stronger than our fears? What could we accomplish? What could we do? How far could we go in our lives? Well, beginning your collegiate journey at Damon will allow you to explore those answers. I want to spend the next few minutes talking to you about what if we what it will take to believe in the infinite possibilities of that question, what if. I will focus on three lessons that you must know to answer the question, what if. Lesson number one, allow yourself to dream. I absolutely love to write. It's not just what I do, it's a part of who I am. I've written about seven books and they all focus on the concept that we have to allow ourselves to have faith and to dream in order to be successful. And I'm sure that many of you have heard of the poet, the writer, Langston Hughes, who was a literary genius. And he wrote the poem, What Happens to a Dream Deferred? Well, my response has always been nothing, absolutely nothing, because you shouldn't let it happen. I believe that if you work a dream, to live a dream, then it will never be deferred. You see, dreams aren't just made for sleeping. They're your motivation and your GPS for your future. And if you allow them to become deferred, then they just become nightmares. You are responsible for the work that is required to fulfill your dreams. That's what you're here for at Damon. You made the choice to be here. That's what you're here for, to help your dreams come true, to make those dreams come true. To utilize everything here at Damon that will help you to make them come true. But because you have to remember, the dreams don't come with the warranty and dreams don't come with a guarantee. Never limit your possibilities because you will disable your abilities. And don't allow difficulties to determine your destiny. Your dreams serve as the pathway to your purpose and Damon can be used to prepare you for the prosperity that you are destined to have. But you first have to allow yourself to dream. Use everything here at Damon to help you work that dream, to live that dream and then your dream cannot and will not be deferred. So the next time you read the Langston Hughes poem and answer it, your response will also be nothing because you will not let it happen. And when you finish one dream, you move on to the next one. The second lesson is allowing yourself to learn. When I first arrived on campus as that wide-eyed and naive 16-year-old, oh, I thought I knew it all. I thought I was the smartest thing because I was accepted into college and I was here. I had gone through so much in my life before I arrived on campus. I just thought I knew it all. I thought that I had it all figured out and that all I needed from Damon was the textbook knowledge and then I can move on to the next phase of my life. I was so wrong. 
Before I cracked the code and realized that there was so much more that Damon had to offer and to teach me beyond the books, I had already begun to stagnate my growth by holding on to old thoughts and old behaviors. But once I allowed myself to absorb the full life that Damon had to offer, I knew that I was truly growing as a person and that no matter what I had been through in my life before attending Damon, I was going to be okay. Allowing myself to learn organically and transform my way of thinking helped me to embrace the fact that I was not special because I had been through stuff in my life before I came to Damon. So I could not allow myself to use that as an excuse to just walk away and give up. Allowing myself to learn taught me flexibility, diversity, spirituality, and about consequences. These lessons were learned all through direct experiences that I had right here on this campus. I learned to live and work with others from various ethnicities and cultures. I learned how to be a bit more flexible in the way I view the world from many professors and the content of my courses. And I didn't just give up and walk away when I received some consequences from a really bad argument I had with an RA that kind of spiraled out of control. I could have given up and walked away, but instead I learned how to deal with those consequences. I knew I had to deal with them to work my dream, to live my dream. You see, when you allow yourself to learn, you're allowing yourself to grow, to improve, and to become a stronger student. Damon has all of the support systems in place right here to help you to make these necessary transitions if you allow them to and if you allow yourself to learn. The final lesson I want to share with you is giving yourself permission to ask for help. Sometimes I think that we believe that we're stronger than we really have to be, and we try to do so many things alone. That's just not in college, that's in life. Well, you don't have to be that way here at Damon, because Damon has those support next to support you, to lead and guide you as you're here. For me, I found the motivation and inspiration I desperately needed from the staff of the HEOP program. The staff at the time knew my story, but they also knew my dreams. So they gave me the academic and emotional support I needed to help me to make those dreams come true. Just as the chair of the psychology department, my beloved Dr. Ellen Banks, believed in my goals and consistently encouraged and challenged me. She's here today and I feel like crying, but I won't. <laughs> I also found the support from my sorority sisters, some of whom are here today. They've always supported me. Those were the surrogate moms that I really, really needed and I made lots of awesome friends at Damon that I still have to this day. I allowed myself to be loved, to be supported, and to be helped. I learned that just because you ask for help doesn't mean that you're weak. It just means that you need some help. Give yourself permission to ask for help because Damon is here to help you. So what if you really believed in the words that I just shared with you? What if you knew that your faith is stronger than your fear? so you should not be afraid to dream? What if you knew that you are already equipped and empowered? What if you knew that you are already promised and prepared? What if you already knew that you have permission to persevere? And what if you knew that if you start before you're ready, that when it's your time, you will be ready? And what if you knew that you should learn to make adjustments and not excuses? Hmm, what if you actually knew all of this? I want to end by sharing with you a very short story. This summer I went to a track competition and I watched this eight-year-olds, eight-year-olds begin to run the 1500 meter race. They were so energized and so excited to be there and they were running, running, running. I watched the kids as they ran around the track a couple of times. But by the third lap, the gap between the lead runner and the last runner was pretty significant. I saw the struggle. I saw the pain, I saw the desperation in their faces as they ran. I saw so many tears, and I watched as many of them struggled to finish that race. This may be parallel to your college journey. Many of you here today are so excited, it's all brand new, like, wow, I'm a college student, I'm actually here. And you're ready to run this race. But you have no idea how tired you're going to get, how rough it will be, and how much many of you will struggle. You don't know how this race is going to end right now, today, 
but you feel ready to begin the race. Just like the eight-year-olds who discovered the depth of their resiliency, you will find yourself doing the same thing here at Damon. But if you, you'll find yourself doing the same thing here at Damon. But if you follow these three lessons that I just taught you, allowing yourself to dream, allowing yourself to learn, and giving yourself permission to ask for help, you'll find it's a little bit easier. If you do this, you will cross that finish line. You will become the victor, and the victory will be yours in this race to earn the degree. What if? What if? What if? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. White Johnson. It is now my pleasure to introduce the Dean of the Division of Health and Human Services, Dr. Ronald Shank. Good morning. Dr. Michael Brogan has been with Damon College since his time as a student, and through his roles as a tenured faculty member, chair of the Physical Therapy Department, Dean of Health and Human Services, and now as Vice President of Academic Affairs. A child prodigy, he accomplished this all by the age of 20. <laughs> well, maybe not 20, but they say 50 is the new 20. At least that's what I'm counting on. Regardless, his work ethic and dedication have led to him being well recognized as an administrator, clinician, professor, and scholar. Dr. Brogan was instrumental in securing over $2 million in grant funding, which helped establish the Damon College Wound Center. This support has resulted in an innovative approach to treating people with chronic wounds and has led to several peer-reviewed publications in this specialty area. As a Fulbright specialist, he is also renowned for his publications in higher education and the art and science of teaching. Dr. Brogan's role as a professor remains important to him. And I would guess that Damon is quite unique in having a person with, with Mike's administrative responsibilities continue as a very effective faculty member. And all of our students are very fortunate to have him contribute to their learning through his teaching and leadership. As Dean of Health and Human Services, I've witnessed Dr. Brogan's effective and collaborative leadership style. Over the past several years, he has been instrumental in the development and implementation of new programs in both divisions. In concert with his commitment to fiscal responsibility in a very competitive market, he is presently engaged with leading additional initiatives that are consistent with the mission of the college in our status as an institution with strong arts and science in health and human services programs. Dr. Brogan has earned the respect of his colleagues at our college and at institutions of higher learning, ranging from Botswana in China to Finland in the Philippines. He is held in highest regard among the students he mentors and among all those he encounters. A true representative of all Damon is and aspires to be, it is my pleasure to welcome Mike Brogan. Thanks, Ron. He must be looking for a raise. <laughs> and thank you, Dr. White Johnson. It was tremendous. Thank you very much. So as the Vice President for Academic Affairs and Dean of the College, and on behalf of the faculty, it's my pleasure to welcome you and to have this brief opportunity to mention a few academic initiatives, which are not only exciting but represent our history as it transitions to our future. As you know, the mission of Damon College is to prepare students for life and leadership. We do that by extending and exercising our core curriculum through our majors, minors, plus pathways and campus activities. In order to meet our mission, we emphasize intellectual rigor, service to the global community, and professional excellence. We are successful because of the nature of our students, expertise and talent of our faculty, and our commitment to our mission. The Arts and Sciences Division provides opportunities to stimulate your mind, develop your senses, and exercise your creativity and intellect. The Health and Human Services Division bridges intellectual modalities to societal needs, and together they stimulate and facilitate your curiosity, enthusiasm, and perseverance, all characteristics of success. We have and continue to develop new opportunities at the bachelor's, master's, and doctoral levels. 
We have added certificate programs at the undergraduate and graduate levels, which will enrich your experience and add extra value to your undergraduate and graduate degrees. We are focused on purpose, efficiency, and excellence. This year, we have launched a master's in social work, which is a seamless transition from any of our undergraduate programs. And we have our first undergraduate student move on to the graduate phase of cytotechnology, which illustrates our unique and exclusive partnership with Roswell Park Cancer Institute. We have enhanced the breadth and depth of our introductory first year IND experience, offering more diversity, and we have enriched our robust and ever-growing entrepreneurial program. Our PLUS Pathways program continues to grow and provides students with an unparalleled opportunity to create their own unique experience, which will set them aside from all others when they enter the job market. We continue to focus on community and the needs of others through our Center for Sustainable Communities and Civic Engagement, Service Learning, and Special Education through the Tom Reynolds Center. Our faculty are continually invited to teach across the globe, and in many cases, serving as a Fulbright Scholar. And each year, we have more students enrich their lives and educational experience through study abroad. Last year, we had the greatest number of students in our history travel abroad. Internationalization of our campus continues to grow, and, reach our, and, and, and the reach of our curriculum extends through the efforts of our admissions office, global programs office, career services, and supportive infrastructure. A reggae tune, famously performed by Bob Marley, includes the lines, and then Georgie would make the fire lights. I say, Longwood burns through the nights. While the intellectual fire burns here at the college, reignited Tuesday by the return of students and faculty, it burns bright, and it is a welcome presence, rich in excitement and enthusiasm. The new academic and fitness complex renovated classrooms across the campus, space equipped with the most contemporary technological support available and additional facilities such as the TriMain Center, Research and Information Commons, and the Visual Arts and Performing Center, all providing you the opportunity to reach your academic and personal goals. The academic term will bring numerous speakers to the college, conferences, panels, and exhibits, one which opens tonight, the Nikifor exhibit, which will be in the Haberman Gasek Visual and Performing Arts Center. Please be sure to see and visit this exciting exhibit. And throughout the fall semester, World War I will be examined from various perspectives and the Nuremberg trials 70 years ago uh, associated with World War II will be discussed. Additionally, our scholar in residence from Poland will share his expertise over the fall semester. It is with great pride that the college welcomes our first, first I'm sorry, our fourth Fulbright scholar in residence within the last five years. Unbelievable. Four Fulbright scholars in residence in five years. So it's my pleasure to welcome Dr. Podlucki, a professor from Yoglanian University, Krakow, Poland, Institute of History. <laughs> Finally, in April, we, we will once again celebrate our curriculum from the integrated perspectives of the students and faculty during our 2015 academic festival. Your academic journey will be filled with new knowledge, experience, and challenges, accomplishments, potential, and promise. You began your journey this week. Enjoy every moment. Build your career, invent your job, enlighten your minds, and enrich the world. Welcome and thank you. Thank you, Dean Brogan. Now I'm pleased to introduce Dr. Patricia Brown, Vice President for Enrollment Management. Good morning. President Olson, members of the Board of Trustees, faculty, staff, administrators, alumni, friends, and students. It is with great pleasure that I present to you the entering class of 2015 and welcome them to the Damon College family.
most of our students were born in 1997. And since they have been on the planet, Google has always been there to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible. They have never licked a postage stamp. Email has become the new formal means of communication. Text and tweets are more casual. No means no and has morphed into only yes means yes. Their parents have gone from encouraging them to use the internet to begging them to get off of it. If you say, around the turn of the last century, they may well ask you, which one? When asked what they thought the world would be like in five years, they overwhelmingly stated that there would be much more technology, but they weren't sure it would make a better world. They also said that we'd have a female president that there'd be less destruction to wildlife. We'd have flying cars, paper-thin phones that you scan with your face. Books will become more rare but continue to smell really nice. And music will never cease to bring happiness to everyone. We surveyed this class on their thoughts of various topics. They told us regarding college life at Damon, when we asked, what will you think will be a wow experience? They said, freedom and independence. Meeting new and different people. Just being accepted as an individual without judgment would be a wonderful change. You told us your heroes were mom and dad who came in first place, followed by grandparents and various other relatives. Batman and Thor were the only superheroes on the list this year. Gandhi, Nelson Mandela, and Martin Luther King Jr., Taylor Swift, and Teddy Roosevelt made the list. Your favorite movies are Minions, American Sniper, and Avengers. Your favorite books, A Fault in Our Stars, If I Stay, The Truth About Forever, Lord of the Rings, and to kill a mockingbird. When asked what your one wish might be, you said, I wish I could time travel to see my grandparents once again, to travel the world. I wish for an end to poverty. I wish to have a reason to laugh every day. And I would like my depression to be gone. I've been dealing with it since I was 12. When asked, what you wanted the world to know about you, you told us, I'm super shy and hate crowds, but only because I have social anxiety. I really love art and reading and turtles. My favorite color is purple. I love to bowl, it's my entire life. And I'm deep. This class is very prepared for classes at Damon College, 82% of our students are Damon College Presidential and Dean Scholars. They come to us from New York State and Canada, Colombia, China, California, Illinois, Jamaica, Vietnam, Maine, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, New Jersey, Guyana, Brazil, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Texas, Washington, D.C., and Florida. I am proud to present the entering class of 2015 to Dr. Greg Nayer, Vice President of Student Affairs. We will now unveil a scroll that was signed by our new students, which will hang in the wall in the Rick Student Center. Thank you, Dr. Brown. It is my privilege to accept this year's entering class to Damon College. Although I have to admit I'm a little concerned that half of you are watching Minions and the other half is watching American Sniper. I'd like something in the middle. If we can make that happen, that would be fantastic. Students, truly welcome. As you have heard our president, Dr. Olson, mentioned before, and as you've just heard Dr. Brown mention just a few minutes ago, you are now part of the Damon College family. 
While many places say that, I would offer that in few places. Is it as true as it is here at Damon? This is your home for the next four, five, or six years, and you, it is our goal to ensure that you get the most out of this college experience. While there is a great deal of diversity of background and experiences in our students, there are also a few commonalities that bind us all together. And I have known, come to know that over the few years of a few things that, that make this true. First, whether you will openly admit it or not, this is a new experience that comes with concerns, fears, and emotions. Some of you may be concerned about being away from home for the first time, navigating college life and living without the support both emotional and financial, of your parents and family. Conversely, there are those of you who have equal fear of guilt that you are away from home and not providing extra help and support for your families. Some of you are anxious about living on campus for the first time, dealing with your roommate or roommates or the guy or girl who lives down the hall, and handling the peer pressure that comes with that. Some of you may even be worried about classes and balancing the heavy course loads and making it in your chosen major or even choosing a major at all. Know that these concerns and fears are normal and that with them come great possibilities. This is your time, your moment, to start carving out your future and what it will be. I am guessing that even during this relatively short period of time that you've been on campus since you started classes, that some of those fears and anxieties have already begun to subside and you have found that this is truly a place where you are more than just a number. Secondly, it's important to note that all of us, at one point or time and another, have come upon an occasion or occasions where we have doubted our abilities, worried that we were not as talented as our peers, that we might not make it as a student, and that our faculty may tell us that they do not like our work. Here is the most important thing I want you to remember as you go through the next year, the next four, five, or six years. All of this will work out. All of this will be okay. These are common emotions for everyone sitting in this room today, especially during the start of or the continuation of your college career. It's all part of the journey into self-discovery and with resolve, drive, and sometimes, as you heard today, a little support, you will absolutely succeed. At the same time, I wanna make sure you know that it's important that this experience can be hard to embrace the fact that yes, at times, you will have setbacks. You may pour your heart and soul into a paper or project only to be told that it's not good enough. You may be pushed intellectually in courses that make you second guess why you came here to study the major that you chose to study. You may develop a great relationship with a peer or a friend, personally, professionally, only to have it dissolve rather unexpectedly. You may practice countless hours to make the team only to see limited playing time. You will, as all of us do from time to time, experience a little failure and a little setback. But it is from those failures that we truly learn and that we truly develop success. We learn an awful lot more from our failures than we will ever possibly learn from our successes. And if you realize that truly these are only momentary setbacks, and you take a time to pause, consider the possibilities, and step back and ask for help, you will move forward exponentially. Embrace these experiences, all of them the good and the bad. Ask for help and push yourself. If you do, I guarantee that you will grow as a student, a professional, and a person in ways that you never thought were possible. You will absolutely have success, create lasting work, and build relationships that will survive the test of time. You can and will become a stronger person, building critical thinking skills and social management skills that you thought could only belong to other people. I encourage you, to embrace every opportunity, setback and disappointment, heartbreak and failure. For every professional who is rich and successful and on the top of the world, at one point or another, they were told that their work was just not good enough, that they were not the right fit, or simply, no, I'm not interested. And as a result, had to reconsider their path and reconsider their direction. Remember, being successful means persevering, becoming resilient, learning what your strengths are and following those paths. You can and will be successful and have your entire future, a very bright future at that, ahead of you. And perhaps most importantly, it's you need to know that you're not alone in dealing with this. We are here to help. So to that end, I encourage you to do the following. One, ask questions. There is not a bad question. Create solutions for yourselves. Do not always expect one just to appear. Learn how and when you may need to ask for help and how to go about getting it. There are plenty of resources on this campus. 
read the college catalog, the student handbook, course syllabi, and your email to know what is happening and what is expected of you. Get to know the people on this campus, faculty, staff, other students. You will be surprised how these connections will positively affect the rest of your life long after you leave Damon College. Get involved with clubs and activities. Attend lectures outside of the class and other events. Classroom material means so much more when they're complemented by these types of activities. And work is good. Get involved in work outside of the class, but remember it's a balance. It's not the only thing that you're here for. Perhaps most importantly, if you remember nothing else of what I've said, remember this. Four years, five years, even six years go by awfully quickly. Embrace the opportunities and challenges in front of you. We are excited for you to be here and excited for to see what you will accomplish over the next few years. Congratulations. Now please join me in welcoming your Student Association President, Mark Poblaki, to the stage. Thank you, everyone. Good morning, and I'd like to extend a warm welcome to all the students, staff, and guests here today. As President of the Student Association, it is my privilege to be here representing the student body and serving this great campus community. I want you to know that all students at Damon College are members of the Student Association. The student activity fees that you pay provide for funding for numerous programs and activities that take place throughout the academic year. The Student Association works together with various student organizations, college committees, and administrative departments to enhance student life on campus. We also work to make sure that students have a voice in issues concerning the college. The SA Board elects six executive positions in the spring, as well as four class presidents in the fall. These 10 individuals make up the Student Association Senate who vote on funding requests and discuss student concerns in upcoming campus events. The Senate also represents the college at numerous campus events and functions. The freshman class president is one of these Senate positions open to all first years in attendance today. I would highly recommend running for this position or any of the Senate positions on the board. board excuse me. The Student Association meets every Tuesday at 1.30 in Wick Center, and all students are welcome to attend these meetings, even if they are not a member of any club or organization. I also encourage you to check out many of the different student organization activities that we help to fund on campus. Damon College is one of the friendly pla friendliest places I have been, and as many student staff and organizations and offices are always welcome to give you a helping hand or address any concerns that you might have. Whether a first year student, a staff member, or even just a friend, I know that this college and academic year will be filled with many memories and exciting experiences for each and every one of you. Make the most of every moment and opportunity that you are given. And I'm extremely excited to meet and work with many of you in the upcoming year. Thank you and hope to see you soon. Thank you, Mark, Dr. Brown, and Dr. Nayer. Before we conclude, I would like to express our appreciation to the Convocation Committee, uh, made up of members of Convo uh, Conference and Events, Admissions, the Dean's Office, Development, Academic Advisement, Technology Maintenance, and of course, our students who always help us with events. We're very grateful, and we want to recognize them. Thank you so much. The Student Association hopes you will join us at their luncheon immediately following in the WIC dining room. And this celebration marks the official opening of the academic year. Please remain seated until the platform party has left the stage and the recession has ended. Thank you and welcome.